Welcome to California View. I'm Kyle and here I want to talk about Tsunami. The day before I'm recording this there was a huge 8 point earthquake offshore Russia and it caused tsunami warnings to be issued all throughout the Pacific. So what I want to talk about here is what a tsunami is and isn't and what are some of the things you do and don't need to worry about in terms of the natural disaster side of it. I worked for Monterey County Emergency Services for a few years and while I was there I actually wrote the Monterey County Tsunami Response Plan where I coordinated with local officials to determine what we would do if there were to be a tsunami warning issued in Monterey County. So I want to talk about a little bit about that but also with tsunami it's also important to know some of the, the knots of it. So it isn't what a tsunami is, it's also what it isn't and what should you do in a tsunami but also what you shouldn't do in terms of a tsunami warning. So I want to talk about some of the stuff that has to do with that but if you've ever seen stuff like this or the the tsunami uh, the warning signs you'll see on the beach that's because of me if you actually see those throughout the state um, there was a big push on getting some of those on some of the beach areas especially in malibu some of the really wealthy spots they didn't want those hazard warnings for tsunamis to be ruining their beaches so um we got them up on the beaches anyway but i was the one really pushing for at the state for the state at the time because um, in December 2004, there was the enormous Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami, which, I mean, over 200,000 people were killed. It was, you know, the most horrifying natural disaster to occur in my lifetime. When I, if I live to be 100, I hope to say that uh, then as well. So because of that big tsunami, I was working at Monterey County in emergency services. So I was there to do, you know, wildfire and earthquake kind of stuff. But because of this, there was you know, genuine concern as to what might happen here in Monterey County or the state in general if there were to be a huge earthquake in Russia, Japan, or offshore California, what would we do? So I'm going to talk about tsunami uh, in this video because, again, it's not just what it is, what it isn't, and then also what you should and shouldn't do. A tsunami is a wave in the ocean being created by geologic disturbance. So a tsunami is a geologic event, not a meteorological one. So a giant storm or a hurricane isn't going to affect a tsunami. But what happens is there's a huge earthquake, and it has to be a huge one. It can't just be a measly 6.5. So this most recent one was an 8.8 .8 maybe as much as that. Maybe 8.5 is huge. So it needs to be a huge earthquake. It needs to be either offshore or very near shore. And it has to be a very shallow depth. So it has to be all three of those for uh, to get a tsunami created. And you'll often see, uh, as an analogy, people use an example, dropping a pebble into a bathtub and you get the ripple effects. But I think a, a much better analogy would be to think of an old claw-footed bathtub filled with water. So imagine shaking it. You know, you shake the bathtub and it comes to a stop and the water still sloshes around, right? So sloshes and sloshes like that back and forth. So you may have heard if you're on the beach while there's a tsunami warning, um, the ocean might retreat, no, not that fast, but it goes at a relatively quick rate, retreating well below low tide line. That's a pretty good indication to get off the beach. So again, it's the sloshing of the ocean after uh, the shaking. And it's very important to know that this isn't the first wave of it that is the worst. It might be the first, but it's often the second that's the worst. So again, think about shaking in the bathtub. The first time it stops, the slosh will be kind of weird, but then we'll kind of get the momentum and then get that big one. So the second one, or maybe even the third slosh will be the one that does the most damage. So um, just because the first one passed and it's gone doesn't mean you can go back out to the beach. Um, so what happens if there is a tsunami warning? So say there's a big one, 8.5 earthquake in Russia. So what should you do in California if you get that warning? For this segment, I'm going to go to this website. It's ustopographicmap.com. I'll leave a link to it. It's a really cool website. As you zoom in, you can just click on an individual space, and it'll tell you the elevation of what it is at that exact location. So, again, I worked in Monterey County, so I'll go straight there, Monterey Bay. And it takes a couple seconds for it to load, but... Um, so what happens is when you get a tsunami warning, that means to you really don't want to be on the beach itself. A lot of times people in the media, in the news, I heard recently with this one, they want you to go inland and up as far as you can. Well, that's, that's, you don't want to say that because that implies you need to get in your car, drive inland as if it's a hurricane evacuation, but it is not. So as most of you know, once you get inland a little bit, it already has some elevation. So I'm going to go to Pacific Grove. This is right here. This is a street that, on the beach. These are beachfront homes. Click right here. 
It's already 33 feet elevation, so you're going to be very safe from a tsunami here. The front line homes here um, are the only ones you would need to evacuate on this spot. So when I was working in Monterey County, we would keep a, a, a spreadsheet of people that lived in the oceanfront homes and put them on a, their phone numbers hooked up onto a thing. So if there's a tsunami warning, it goes straight out to them as an automated warning. And as you can imagine, the folks that uh, live here on the coast of Carmel and Pebble Beach, these are not the poorest folks in the world. I had the home address or the home phone number of some names you probably have heard of, but you go to other parts of this area. So you go to, you know, the dunes. I mean, obviously dunes are going to be higher elevation. So what do you have here? 43 feet. So you don't have to go really far inland. So what I did was working with the county is we would coordinate with the uh, state parks because a lot of the county, a lot of the uh, coastal areas around Big Sur are state parks. And then also with the city of Monterey, city of Pacific Grove, city of Seaside, because what we would do in a warning, we would just have law enforcement go to the beach and just, you know, get off the beach, just go inland a couple of blocks. So here is downtown Monterey. So over here is Cannery Row. This is a big uh, tourist area. People like to go there. Well, what if you're right at Cannery Row? Elevation is already 40 feet. So you don't have to get in your car and drive to Salinas or drive to Fresno. All you have to do is get on your feet and walk not very far. So that is one thing it's really important to know about tsunami with very few specific areas, you don't have to evacuate except for the immediate beaches. So I'm gonna go down to where most of you live, zoom out a little bit. So what about down here? That's Monterey, you got Big Sur, you got those big cliffs. What about here? What if, you, uh, what if you live here? What if you live Long Beach? What is it right here, Long Beach? Right there on the coast, 64 feet. You're already at 64 feet at downtown Long Beach. Convention Center, 47 feet. So a five-foot tsunami is a big tsunami. Um, if you're standing on the beach and five feet of water come at once, you're getting knocked off, you're getting carried back out to the ocean and hope you had a good life. Five feet is a big tsunami, but it's not going to go anywhere near these areas. This spot here, biological reserve, that's probably pretty low. I wouldn't want to be there. Zero feet. So, yeah, there, you don't want to be right on the beach, but we don't have wide swaths. It's not Florida here. We don't have wide swaths where it's just flat. If there were to be a giant tsunami in Florida, the whole state would be essentially covered. But here, there's so much topography, um, you know, topography leads to earthquakes sometimes, but in terms of tsunami you're going to be generally safer what about down here orange county i'm sure this place bolsa chica is not where you want to be that's got to be barely above sea level 14 feet you're probably safe there but i wouldn't be there so you can just i'm not going to click on every spot it's going to be the same wherever you go huntington beach 53 feet um, i'll go down to san diego um, obviously here is going to be high as well so we'll go to oceanside 75 feet what's what's it like on pacific street in oceanside you're already at 25 feet on it. So again, I'm not gonna do the entire state, but I'm gonna just show just the major pop centers so you, you know, can know for sure. But again, you can go to this website and see exactly where you live. So here you got, what about Coronado? That's pretty low. Let's see what Coronado's got on First Street. 20 feet, but even, even First Street in Coronado, you probably don't wanna be right there in case of a splash type effect. But uh, the point is, the vast majority of Californians do not live somewhere where it's a big concern. Now, where some of the concerns are going to be are like some of those wetland spots right along the coast. And then for us specifically, there's a spot called Elkhorn Slough up here around Moss Landing, if you're familiar with the area. This is low lying. So you also wouldn't want to be along a creek like this. This is a, um, you know, a creek as it empties into the ocean. So you might know Malibu Creek down in Malibu. You wouldn't want to be even a half a mile inland along the creek, uh, that wouldn't be too wise. So, but this spot here, Elkhorn Slough is low, minus two feet. Yeah, that's not a spot you want to be. But even Santa Cruz, the beach boardwalk, I wouldn't be on a boardwalk, but you're going to be more or less pretty much safe. Here's the Santa Cruz main beach this is on the beach. This is literally on the beach, the volleyball courts, 15 feet. So nine feet there. If you were to have a 10 foot tsunami, a you could be literally on those volleyball courts and be fine. Now, don't, if there's a tsunami warning, go more inland. But um, again, topography means you're not going to 
have major issues. Now, one thing that's very interesting is that um, you wouldn't think so, you might not think so, but if you're in the open ocean and you're in a boat, you might not even, you actually won't know there's a tsunami going underneath you. There, it's all turbulent there, but on the on the sea, it's, it's gonna be pretty calm. In fact, the Coast Guard and people with yachts push their boats out to the sea when there's a tsunami warning. So um, I wouldn't recommend that in your little pleasure boat or your sea kayak, but the big boats and stuff, they do take them out to sea. Um, but with that being said, when there was uh, a big tsunami that might have affected other spots, but not so much California, it still can do a lot at the harbor. So you're, if you have a boat at the harbor, it might get tossed around, sloshed around, tossed into the next boat over. And that's usually where you get your big damage is at the harbors themselves or boats are kind of sloshing up against each other. Um, you know, San Francisco, I wouldn't want to be on Baker Beach. You know, I, that's probably not where you want to be, two feet, yeah. But the Great Highway is already going to be, what, 20 feet at least, 24. So, yeah, um, yeah, you're going to be pretty safe. I mean, Fisherman's Wharf, don't be on the don't be on the pier. Don't be feeding the sea lions on Pier 39 with the tsunami warning, but just go to Chinatown. You only have to, not even Chinatown, just go to... <laughs> Just go to Ghirardelli Square. All right, so, but with all that being said, there is one part of the state where you do legitimately have to be concerned with tsunami, and it's up here, Crescent City. Oh, well, before I get to Crescent City, uh, you often get big offshore earthquakes here. Um, this, you often get seven-point earthquakes offshore Mendocino and Humboldt, Del Norte counties, and these are huge earthquakes. I mean, a 7.5 in downtown San Francisco, L.A., that's incredible damage but despite those being huge earthquakes even a 7.5 is normally not don't write this down but is normally not going to create a large enough tsunami to be a big concern um, again don't don't take my word on that but again you'll, you'll probably be pretty safe but it, once you get above eight is where you can get pretty pretty sketchy situations so back in 1964 there was a 9.2 earthquake offshore Alaska and the Aleutian Islands, 9.2 is just insane. And Crescent City was affected with a tsunami pretty seriously. So I'll see if I can get some images for that. Um, maybe not. I'm not sure how many I can show. But um, really low line here, you can see, of course, I'm, if I'm showing those images, and I can't see this, but this is minus 9 feet. Uh, the airport at Del Norte County that's 53 feet, so that's at least pretty good. But parts of the town are low-lying, and the places that get the most affected by tsunami are usually ones that have a, a weird, not weirdly, but a, a, the shape of the bay might, just the bathymetry, the underlying geology of the ocean can affect how the water comes in, but it's usually somewhere with just the perfect shape, direction of the bay, and Crescent City is the one in California that matters or that has the biggest uh, concern for that. In fact, the, the tsunami warning, it was canceled for literally every other county in the entire country, Hawaii, Alaska, everywhere, except for Del Norte County here. So that is the one spot. And so if you are to be in Crescent City, you, that's one place you do want to get more inland than just walking a couple of blocks. You'll want to, you'll need to you know, cons consult with the local officials for sure, but you'll want to get I would get more inland than downtown. Um, that's about the only place where being downtown is maybe not the best place to be. So if you're in Crescent City, you I would imagine you would know, um, at least if nothing else, heard the stories and know to go inland a little bit more than other people. Um, I would have to imagine that. I would like to think so. There are other places in Oregon, but, you know, so... I'm not going to get into Oregon, but there are a couple of spots there in Washington as well. But uh, Crescent City, not just because of this channel, but overall, U.S., Crescent City is the place in the contiguous U.S. that has the biggest concern. Um, Hilo, Hawaii, is the city in the overall U.S., the biggest pop center that has the um, biggest thing. So, all right, so what about, say, a 9.5, well, that's not as realistic. Let's say an 8-point earthquake offshore California. What if that were to happen here? So the San Gregorio Fault I'm not sure exactly how it runs. It's roughly parallel to the coastline between uh, San Luis Obispo-ish and Bay Area-ish. Um, and that's p capable of a huge earthquake. There could be a 7.5 in the San Gregorio. So 
if you are on the coast and if you're on the beach and you feel a big earthquake, like you're there when it happens, get inland immediately. That's when you really have to, okay, okay, we got to get going. So if you're in a coastal beach, not, not, or the wetlands, or maybe you're in one of those, uh, those, uh, you know, bird sanctuary spots along the coast, you, of course, there you want to have no time to get off. But I mean, if you're on the beach, you feel the big earthquake, move inland, but you, I mean, if you live in Los Angeles, you're not going to drive to Riverside to get away from a tsunami. So again, just on the beach alone, but for Crescent City, it's going to be a lot more than the beach. But um, but that's really important to know because it's something that you'll hear every now and then. The word tsunami was kind of out of the American discussion because, you know, it's been 21 years since that big one in 2004. Um, So... We often don't hear about it, and when we do, it's often sensational. You'll see these ridiculous thumbnails of just these giant, you know, surfer-type waves. Oh, tubular, dude, but it's not that. There'll be a giant uh, wall of water, like a hurricane storm surge, and it'll sweep you away as opposed to coming down like a big crashing wave. Um, So, and also, again, like I was saying on, it was CNN or, you know, one of the news things, it was saying go inland and upland as much as possible. Now, again, those are dangerous words to say inland and upland as much as possible. We don't need traffic congestion getting out because of a tsunami. I saw something with, uh, it was in Hawaii yesterday, people bumper to bumper taillights. I'm like, it's a tsunami, not a, not a, not a hurricane. So so for most people, again, that might have been Hilo, where I was seeing the video in the Hilo. Yeah, you might need to get in your car, drive a few miles. But for most people, if you're not right on the beach, you're going to be fine. And if you feel an earthquake on the beach, get inland. If you if it's this situation where it's a huge earthquake somewhere else in the Pacific Rim, just get off the beach. So those are some of the things I wanted to discuss in regard to tsunami. And there are plenty of places on Earth that do have to worry about a tsunami based on the way their oceanography is and things like that. But for California, it really is just a few individual spots. Unless you're someone that owns a yacht in the harbor, you have to worry about that kind of stuff. But for most people, it's going to be not something to be really uh, too scared about. But I think you do need to worry more about flooding. So one of the things I did with the tsunami planning was knowing it's not likely to occur, but some of the areas that might be inundated with some rising water were some of those low-lying creek spots right at the mouth of the the rivers, some of those sloughs. So I used some of the, you know, stuff about tsunami to kind of push more of the floodplain type education because the tsunami itself is not likely to happen, but flooding, normal flooding is much more likely to occur. But yeah, this is California View Channel. Hope you like videos like this. I don't post on here too often. My main channel, Geography King, is the main Thing I'm focused on, but check back here every now and then for some interesting information on California. But yeah, thanks for watching.